I'm Bella, 27, and by no means a pushover. I work as a secretary, a job that has me juggling calls and coffee, all while trying to keep a straight face when my boss cracks one of his stale jokes. Life was a regular routine until that night at a friend's party when I bumped into Jake. Jake was a tall, lanky guy with a smile that could light up the room. He had that effortless charm about him, cracking jokes one minute and deep in thought the next. We got talking, and before I knew it, hours had passed. Hey, I'm Jake. You look like you could use a better drink than that, he said, nodding at the almost empty plastic cup in my hand. I raised an eyebrow, and you look like you've got a better suggestion? Follow me and find out, he grinned, leading the way to where the real party was a table laden with all sorts of drinks. We spent the evening talking about everything and nothing. His jokes were actually funny, a refreshing change from the dry humor I was used to at work. As the party wound down, we exchanged numbers. Don't be a stranger, Jake said as he left, or do, but only if you're into that mystery vibe. I laughed, tucking away his number. We'll see, funny guy. As I headed home, I couldn't shake off the feeling that this was the beginning of something. But that night, it was just the city lights, the lingering laughter from the party, and the slight buzz from the drinks. The next few weeks were a blur of texts and calls with Jake. He was like a breath of fresh air, always popping up with a joke or a plan to meet up. It was hard not to get swept up in his energy. Then came the day he invited me over to his place. You gotta meet the folks, he said casually, as if it wasn't a big deal. Meet your parents? I hesitated. Aren't we moving a bit fast? Nah, they're cool. Plus, I want them to meet the girl who's been stealing all my time, he joked, but I could tell he was serious. I agreed, not knowing what I was walking into. Looking back, I wish I had taken a bit more time, maybe then I would have seen what was coming. But life doesn't give you a heads up, does it? No, it just throws you in the deep end and watches as you try to swim. The day to meet Jake's parents came quicker than I'd have liked. I remember standing in front of my closet, trying to pick out something that said nice to meet you, and not, I'm here to steal your son. Finally, settling on a simple dress, I took a deep breath and headed out. Jake's house was one of those big, sprawling places with a garden out front. Flowers, trees, you name it, his mom had it growing there. She'll love to show you around, Jake had said with an enthusiasm I didn't quite share. As we walked up to the door, Jake squeezed my hand. Don't worry, they're going to love you. The door swung open, and there stood Mrs. Green, a woman with a stern look that could make a grown man flinch. So, this is her, she said, eyeing me from head to toe. Not exactly the warm welcome I was hoping for. Mom, this is Bella. Bella, my mother, Jake introduced. Charmed, I said, extending my hand. She gave a nod her lips tight. Come in. Let's not stand around. The inside of the house was as immaculate as the garden. We sat in the living room, and that's when the interrogation began. Mrs. Green didn't waste any time. So, Bella, Jake tells us you're a secretary. That must be, interesting, she said, the word interesting hanging in the air, like it was a bad smell. Yeah, it's got its moments. Keeps me on my toes, I replied, trying to keep it light. And your boss, he's a man, I presume, she prodded, her eyes narrowing. I nodded. Yes, he is. A very professional and respectful one. Mrs. Green hummed, as if she had expected as much. I suppose you spend a lot of time together, being his secretary, and all. I could feel the insinuation heavy in her tone. Jake jumped in. Mom, come on, let's not start this. No, it's okay, I said, feeling a need to defend myself. We work together, but that's it. There's nothing more. Mrs. Green looked at me, then at Jake, and then back to me. I see. Well, as long as it's professional. The conversation stumbled on, every topic somehow circling back to my job or my relationship with my boss. It was like she had a one-track mind set on making me uncomfortable. At one point, Jake excused himself to take a call, leaving me alone with his mother. You know, my son could do a lot better than a secretary, she said, her voice low but clear. I was taken aback. I'm sorry you feel that way. 
I care a lot about Jake, and I'm not here to cause any trouble. Mrs. Green stood up, her posture rigid. Just so we're clear, I have my eye on you. Any slip up, and I'll make sure Jake sees sense. The threat hung between us, heavy and cold. I sat there, trying to process what just happened. It was clear this wasn't going to be easy. When Jake came back, I plastered a smile on my face, but inside, I was reeling. After a few months of dating, Jake and I decided it was time to take the next step, moving in together. I remember the day I left my small, cozy apartment, boxes in hand, a mix of excitement and nerves bubbling in my stomach. Jake was all grins, helping me settle into what was now our place. It was nice, waking up next to him every morning, sharing coffee, and lazy weekends. But as they say, good things never last, especially if Mrs. Green has anything to say about it. One Saturday morning, as we were lounging around, the doorbell rang. Jake went to answer it, and in came Mrs. Green, her eyes scanning the room like she was looking for something, or rather, someone to criticize. Mother! What a surprise! Jake said, clearly caught off guard. Save it, Jacob. I know what's going on here. She snapped, her eyes finally landing on me. Living in sin, are we? Jake's face turned red, Mom, it's not like that. We're serious about each other. She scoffed. Serious? Please. You barely know her. I stood up, feeling the need to defend our relationship. Mrs. Green, I care about Jake, and we're happy together. Happy? She laughed, a harsh sound that filled the room. Let's see how happy you are when the novelty wears off. She walked around, inspecting the place like she was going to find something incriminating. Her eyes landed on a photo of Jake and me at a beach. And what's this? Hardly appropriate, wouldn't you say? Jake tried to intervene. Mom, that's enough. But she was on a roll. I won't have my son shacking up with just anyone. What will people think? I could feel the anger rising in me. We're not hurting anyone. We're adults, making our own decisions. Mrs. Green turned to me, her gaze sharp. You may have fooled my son, but you don't fool me. I see right through you. The argument escalated from there, voices raised, words thrown like punches. In the end, Mrs. Green left, but not before declaring, this isn't over. Her visit left a sour taste, the tension hanging between Jake and me. We tried to brush it off, go about our day, but it wasn't the same. Her words echoed in the back of my mind, a constant reminder of the disapproval looming over us. As days turned into weeks, the strain grew. Small arguments became regular, each one chipping away at the happiness we had built. I couldn't shake the feeling that Mrs. Green was somewhere out there, smirking, pleased with the chaos she had sown. One night, I worked late. The project was a beast, and everyone had left except me and my boss, who was in his office doing who knows what. Bella, you still here? My boss called out as he finally emerged. Yeah, just finishing up this report, I replied, stretching my arms. Late night, huh? Let me drive you home. It's not safe this late, he offered. I was tired, the thought of waiting for a bus wasn't appealing, so I agreed. We walked to his car, making small talk about the day. It was all very normal until we pulled up to my place. Thanks for the ride, I said, reaching for the door. No problem, Bella. See you tomorrow, he replied with a tired smile. As I got out of the car, I didn't notice Jake standing there, his face a mix of anger and hurt. I realized too late as he stormed towards me. Bella, what the hell is this? Jake shouted, his eyes darting from me to my boss driving away. It's not what it looks like, Jake. He was just giving me a ride home, I tried to explain. A ride home? At this hour? With him, he was fuming, not listening to a word I said. Jake, please, you're overreacting. It's late, I was alone at the office, and he offered to drive me. That's all, I pleaded. All, huh? And I'm supposed to believe that? His voice was loud, attracting a few glances from neighbors. I'm telling you the truth. Why won't you believe me? My voice cracked, the frustration and hurt bubbling up. Because I know men like him. And you, out late, with your boss? It's not right, he accused. 
Jake, you're being ridiculous. Nothing is going on. I love you, I said, my voice firm. He scoffed, yeah? Well, it sure doesn't look like it. The argument went back and forth, each accusation more hurtful than the last. Eventually, he stormed off, leaving me standing there, alone and bewildered. I grabbed a few essentials and headed back to my old place. The night was quiet, but my mind was a loud mess of thoughts and worries. I couldn't believe a simple act of kindness from my boss would lead to this. No sooner had I settled into my old, now strangely unfamiliar bed, the phone rang. It was Mrs. Green. Her voice oozed satisfaction. Well, Bella, seems like you've moved back. Can't say I'm surprised. I knew it was only a matter of time. Her laughter was cold, ringing in my ears long after I had hung up. I lay there, the weight of her words pressing down on me. I realized then that this was far from over. Her glee at my predicament was just another reminder of the uphill battle I was facing, not just with Jake, but with his entire family. And as I drifted into a restless sleep, I couldn't shake the feeling of dread for what was yet to come. Life was quiet after the big blowout with Jake. I kept to myself, trying to mend the pieces of my bruised heart. Days turned into weeks, and just as I started to feel a bit like my old self again, life decided to throw me another curveball. I found out I was pregnant. I remember sitting in my bathroom, staring at the positive test. A mix of emotions flooded through me fear, excitement, but mostly a deep, nagging worry about how Jake would react. I debated telling him, going back and forth in my mind, but eventually, I decided against it. I would raise this child on my own. But secrets have a way of coming out, and this one was no different. Jake found out. I still don't know how, but one day, there he was, standing at my door, looking as shocked and scared as I felt. Bella, is it true? Are you, are we going to have a baby? He stammered, his face pale. I nodded, unable to form words. The silence stretched between us, heavy and awkward. Why didn't you tell me, Bella? Why, he finally managed, his voice a mix of hurt and anger. I, I was scared, Jake. Scared of how you'd react, scared of doing this all alone. I confessed, the words tumbling out. He ran a hand through his hair, a gesture of frustration I knew all too well. We should have talked about it. It's not just your decision, Bella. I knew he was right, but at the moment, it didn't seem that simple. I know, and I'm sorry. I just, I didn't know what to do. We talked for hours, going in circles, the same arguments, the same fears. But as the night wore on, something shifted. We started to see not just the challenges, but the possibilities. Maybe, just maybe, we could do this together. In a decision that surprised both of us, we agreed to start over. We decided to get married, but this time, we'd do it our way, away from all the drama and judgment. A simple courthouse ceremony, just us and a couple of friends. It was quick, maybe a bit impulsive, but it felt right. The day we got married was nothing like I'd ever imagined. No fancy dress, no big party. Just the two of us, exchanging vows in a small, stuffy room. But when I looked into Jake's eyes, I knew it was perfect. We kept it a secret, not ready to deal with the fallout from his family, especially Mrs. Green. We needed time to adjust, to prepare for the baby, to figure out how we were going to handle everything. It was our little bubble of happiness, fragile, but ours. Jake and I were living in our little world, trying to prepare for the baby's arrival. But we both knew we couldn't keep our secret forever. The day finally came when Jake decided it was time to tell his parents. We gotta do it, Bella. They need to know about the baby, about us, he insisted one morning, a determined look on his face. I was scared, to say the least. But what about your mom? You know she's gonna flip. He took my hands in his. I'll handle mom. You just focus on you and the baby. So, we went to his parents' house. My heart was pounding as we walked up the driveway. The door opened, and there stood Mrs. Green, looking as stern as ever. Jacob, what are you doing here? And you brought her, she said, eyeing me with disdain. Mom, we've got something to tell you. It's important, Jake said, stepping in front of me slightly. 
She let us in, the curiosity clear on her face. We all sat down, the tension thick in the air. Jake took a deep breath and began, Mom, Dad, Bella, and I got married a few months back. And, and we're expecting a baby. There was a moment of stunned silence before Mrs. Green erupted. Married? A baby? How could you be so irresponsible? Mom, it's not like that. We love each other. We're happy. Jake tried to explain. Happy? Look at her. She's trapped you with this child, Mrs. Green accused, pointing a finger at me. I felt my face heat up, I didn't trap anyone. This baby is a blessing, not a trap. Don't talk back to me, girl, I know your type, she snapped. Jake stood up, his face red with anger. Enough, mom. This is my life, my wife, my child. If you can't accept that, then maybe we don't need to be part of yours. The room fell silent, Mrs. Green's face red with anger, but there was a flicker of something else, maybe fear, maybe realization. Mr. Green, who had been silent till now, put a hand on her shoulder, a silent plea. She looked at him, then back at us, her face softening, just a fraction. I, I need time to process this. We left shortly after, the air between us heavy, but hopeful. As we drove away, Jake squeezed my hand, that went better than expected. I laughed, despite everything. Yeah, if you consider World War III better than expected. But it was out now, the truth. We were married, expecting a baby, and for better or worse, his family knew. It felt like a weight had been lifted, but at the same time, a new worry had settled in. How would Mrs. Green react once the news really sunk in? Would she come around, or would she be an ever-present thorn in our side? Only time would tell, but for now, we had each other, and that was enough. As we drove home, the sun setting in the distance, I felt a sense of peace. We were together, we were strong, and no matter what came our way, we'd face it together, as a family. A few weeks had passed since the big reveal to Jake's parents. Things were quiet, almost eerily so. Then, one afternoon, Mrs. Green showed up at our door, unannounced, with a homemade cake in hand. Bella, I baked this for you. A peace offering, let's say, she said, her voice softer than I'd ever heard it. I was taken aback, not sure what to make of this sudden gesture. Uh, thanks, Mrs. Green. That's, unexpected. She smiled, a bit too sweetly. Call me mother, dear. After all, we are family now. After some awkward small talk, she left, leaving the cake on the kitchen counter. I invited a friend over to share the cake. Hey, Lisa, wanna come over for some cake? It's a, long story. Lisa arrived, and I cut the cake, serving us both a piece. But as fate would have it, she was on a new diet kick and refused at the last minute. You know what, I'll take it home for later. My cheat day's tomorrow. She laughed, wrapping up a big slice. I shrugged and took a bite of mine. It was delicious, almond flavor bursting in my mouth. But as the evening wore on, I started feeling odd, queasy. I chalked it up to pregnancy nausea and went to bed early. But the nausea didn't go away, it got worse. By midnight, I was violently ill, and Jake rushed me to the hospital. After what felt like endless tests and worried looks from doctors, they told us the shocking news. There was a toxic substance in my system, something commonly used in gardening, to kill pests. Jake's face went white as he realized the implication. The cake, my mom. I was too weak to respond, a cold dread settling in my stomach. Had Mrs. Green really tried to harm me, to harm her own grandchild? I was kept in the hospital overnight, and by morning, I was feeling a bit better, but the emotional toll was immense. Jake was a mess, torn between worry for me and disbelief that his mother could do such a thing. We were talking on the phone about it, Jake's voice heavy with concern, we need to figure out what to do next, when suddenly the door to my room creaked open, and in walked Mrs. Green. I quickly muted the phone but didn't hang up, Jake still listening in. Bella, how are you feeling dear? She asked, her voice dripping with faux concern. I looked at her, feeling a mix of anger and disbelief. I've been better, I said, coldly. She tooted, Such a shame about the sickness. And the baby? 
The baby is fine, I replied, watching her reaction closely. Her face faltered for just a moment, a flash of disappointment, crossing her features. Well, that's good to hear, she said, but the words felt hollow. Then, with a smirk, she added, Of course, you have no proof of what caused your little, incident. I made sure of that when I threw away the rest of that cake first thing this morning. My heart raced, Jake still on the line, hearing every word. She had just admitted to it, not realizing the call was still connected. As she turned to leave, I looked down at the phone, a plan forming in my mind. Mrs. Green might think she's covered her tracks, but she was wrong. We had her confession, and now it was time to make her face the consequences. After Mrs. Green left the hospital room, I called Lisa, who thankfully hadn't eaten her piece yet. She was horrified by the news and agreed to bring the cake to the police as evidence. Then I dialed Jake again. Jake, did you hear all that? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Yeah, every single word, he replied, anger seething through his tone. I can't believe she'd go this far. I'm coming back to the hospital, and we're going to the police. We've got her now, Bella. By the time Jake arrived, I had managed to steady my nerves. Together, we went to the police station, the phone recording in hand. The officers listened intently, their expressions growing grimmer, with every word Mrs. Green had unwittingly spilled. They assured us they would investigate immediately. The next few days were a blur of police visits, interviews, and a growing sense of dread about what was to come. Mrs. Green was brought in for questioning, and with the evidence stacked against her, she had no choice but to confess to her horrendous act. The news of her arrest spread quickly, and suddenly, the whole town was buzzing about the scandal. Jake stayed by my side through it all, his support unwavering. I'm so sorry, Bella. I never thought she'd do something like this. I know, Jake. But we're together in this, that's what matters, I reassured him, squeezing his hand. The trial date was set quickly, given the severity of the crime. Mrs. Green faced the judge, her usual stern demeanor replaced by a look of defeat. The evidence was undeniable, and she was found guilty of attempted poisoning. The sentence was harsh, but just, given the potential consequences of her actions. As we walked out of the courtroom, Jake and I both felt a strange mix of relief and sadness. It was over, but at such a cost. His mother, the woman who had raised him, was now behind bars, because of her own twisted actions. We decided it was time to move on, to focus on the future and the arrival of our baby. The house felt quieter, the air lighter, as if a dark cloud had been lifted. Our friends and family rallied around us, their support a constant source of comfort. One evening, as we sat on the porch, Jake wrapped his arm around me. We've been through hell, Bella, but we made it. I love you, and I can't wait to start this new chapter with our little one. I leaned into him, my head resting on his shoulder. Me too, Jake. It's going to be a fresh start for all of us. The baby kicked, as if in agreement, and we both laughed. It was a sound of pure joy, a sign that despite everything, we were going to be okay. As the sun set, painting the sky in hues of pink and orange, I realized that justice had been served, not just in the courtroom, but in our lives too. We had been tested, pushed to our limits, but in the end, we emerged stronger, united, and ready to face whatever the future held.